In this video, we're going to look at five tips for creating scripts using the Fusion 360 API with Python. Hoping that I can show you enough so that you can get your own script started. I'm not an expert in this by any means, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what I did to actually get the thing going and get working scripts and be able to draw some geometry and create some models. So the first thing we have to get right is there are some imports that you have to make to even get the script started. And these are just things that have to happen. Otherwise, the script um, doesn't know where it is in terms of uh, fusion. So you've got to tell it where the UI is. You have to tell it that it's in the design uh, mode. And you can check these things as you set them. And then you can throw an error if something's not right. So if, for instance, they try to run the script and they're not in design mode, it'll tell them, hey, you can't run it from there and get another chance to run it. To be honest, there's not much um, error checking in this script. And the reason is I didn't go into a lot of detail on that. It usually just, if it fails while I was um, programming it, when it failed, the traceback just told you where it failed, and, and that was it. It's pretty innocuous. It's not like a major disaster. But first, take a moment just to like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks. The next thing <clears throat> is the documentation for the API, which is provided by Autodesk. You can actually go there and see the documentation in some pretty good detail, um, how to use it. There's also some videos there that are presentations um, that'll give you some insights. I strongly recommend that you take a look at the documentation and that documentation includes all the things that you're gonna need to, to be able to create um, decent scripts and, and do different things outside of what I've done. So I, I just did a sketch and extruded it. I did some user input, but I didn't use all of these features. So all those features are available. And if you take a look at the documentation, you'll be able to figure out how they work. And then of course, the most important thing is there are some code samples actually on that same page. If you scroll down, you'll see the code samples. And you can use those, you can use those as a basis of creating your own scripts, or you can just uh, steal pieces out there that you want to do certain things with. So it's quite well explained and you can see how to use the, uh, the examples that they have. One other thing that comes under documentation or at least the management of your script, I recommend you set up uh, either a Git or a, you know, GitHub or what I use is Bitbucket. Um, set up yourself a directory there. You can set up the Git so that it saves the files directly from what you're using in Fusion. So in other words, when you save it from your editor, it'll be in the right place for Fusion. And then you can just push it up to your Git so that you have it, um, the code versions and the, the file itself, you have it saved somewhere that's not on your PC in case you have a crash or something. The next thing is really just to keep it simple. When you're building these scripts, you want to build up gradually because you want to make sure you can test it and everything works. And remember that Python is a bit finicky when it comes to spaces and stuff. And, and some of the error messages that come out of Fusion give you an idea of where the error is. But others, in fact, sometimes if you just if you've made a mistake in your spacing, you've indented too far or something like that, the script just doesn't run and there's no feedback whatsoever. So you have to try and figure that out. So you got to keep it simple, keep it into small portions, use subroutines, and that will make it um, easier for you to debug and to get it working and to be able to use the repeatability of the subroutine. Do me a favor, like and subscribe the video and I'll make more. Thanks. The 
And this is just a brief example of user input. So I, you can see the box pops up and I'll show you the line of code that makes that happen. The technique I used for creating these sketches and then extruding the models was very simple. I used the create point. So I created all the points and then I just joined the line. So the line is uh, a line between two points and it's like join the dots. So you just keep it very, very simple, plot out the points and then just join the points with lines. Um, Obviously, you have to do the mathematics so that you can know where the, the point should go. But once you have that, it's pretty straightforward to draw the geometry. Then I'll just demonstrate the extrusion, which again is done in a subroutine. So all I do is I send it the profile that I need to and immediately it will do the extrusion and then return. And so if I want to make two pieces, because each side has two identical sides, um, I just do the subroutine twice. So I'm not I'm doing the code twice. I'm just going to the subroutine and saying create another side. Very, very simple. Then finally, the one bit that took me ages to figure out, I don't know, there's, I didn't find any documentation on it, but it's passing the sketch profile. So you need to be able to identify the sketch profile and pass it to the extrusion so that it extrudes that. Otherwise, it'll just extrude the first sketch on the list and it'll keep doing the first sketch. So you need to pass that profile over. If you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.